Hello, my name is Pastor Brick Cliff, and it's my joy and privilege to be with you today as we look together at the subject of dynamic biblical preaching. You know, I would like you to know that it is a privilege for you also to be in this course. Why? Because preaching the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ is a high calling. In fact, I believe it's the highest calling that God ever gives to any person. In Isaiah chapter 52, verse 7, the word of God says this, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news. I want you to know that God the creator says that you are a beautiful person. Why? Because you're spreading the wonderful gospel of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, as preachers, we are ambassadors of Christ. And we're also privileged to be alive during the greatest harvest of human history. Do you realize that as we live today, for every three people who are being born, at least one of those people is giving their lives to Jesus Christ. You know, I have the privilege and you have the privilege of sharing the gospel during a time where God is plundering hell and filling up heaven where people are coming from every tribe and tongue and nation and heaven is being filled for Calvary's sake. It is such a wonderful, tremendous privilege to be able to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, I also want you to know that I don't believe it's a mistake that you're taking this course right now. I believe you're taking it because God has chosen you for the wonderful privilege of being a co-laborer with him in the harvest field, giving you the chance to teach and preach and disciple the nations for his son, Jesus Christ. You know, I was um, saved at a very early age, saved at the age of only five years old. And that same year that I was saved, I was also baptized, in fact, baptized in a river. And I remember the pastor who baptized me prophesied over me, and he said, this boy is called to preach. I remember at 18 years old, I was able to preach my first sermon in a church. And I've been doing it now for more than 30 years since that time. Now, perhaps you haven't had a prophetic word over you, but I believe that if you're preaching the gospel, it's because God decided and chose that he would give you this tremendous privilege. He saw something in you and created something in you for the people of your nation so that you could be a blessing, even as Abraham was a blessing to all nations. Now, I also want you to know that uh, if you're watching this, it's also probably because you have a zeal, a zeal for God's word, a zeal for God's people, a, a love for the lost. And yet the Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs, chapter 19, verse 2, it isn't good to have zeal without knowledge or to be hasty and to miss the way. And, and I realize that you don't want to be just a, a regular preacher or an average preacher or someone that people don't really want to listen to, but you want to preach the word of Jesus Christ with excellence and dynamic speaking and attract people to Christ and help Christians to change the difficult areas in their lives that need to change. And I want you to know that is what this course is all about. This course is about memorable, dynamic, biblical preaching 
preaching that changes lives, preaching that people remember for years to come, preaching that has impact and makes a difference. Now, before I begin uh, talking about this, um, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself. I've been married for 30 years uh, to a wonderful woman of God, God named Beth. We live in Texas. We have three grown children. Our firstborn, Sarah, is married, and she is a missionary in Asia. Our two sons, Benjamin and Josiah, are in university now. And uh, I'm also the president and founder of World Impact Now Ministries, as well as the president of Nation to Nation Christian University. Uh, our ministry has training centers in numerous countries and in languages around the world. Now, during this course, we will study many practical steps that are involved in preparing a message or a sermon. We will also be learning how to be an exceptional preacher. We'll be covering many important principles and practices, but here let me encourage you not to be overwhelmed. Uh, for some of you, this will be your first time to hear many of these things or to have a course on preaching. And I want you to know that uh, if, it, if it seems difficult, uh, don't worry, because you'll be able to learn it little by little over time as you go over your notes, perhaps as you get to review the course. Um, but also I want you to know that even if you grasp and put into practice just a few of the main principles found in this course, it will tremendously improve your preaching and your impact as you share in your church and as you share with unbelievers. So I want you to be encouraged even before we start. God has his plan on your life and he has a purpose for you being in this course. In fact, before we look at the notes now, let's pray together. Father, I just ask in Jesus' name that for each person listening right now, that your anointing would flow to them, that they would hear what your spirit is saying and what your word is saying, and Lord, that they would be able to become dynamic, uh, incredible, excellent preachers of your word and see many, many lives changed in wonderful ways. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you have your notes, I'd like you to turn in them now, and we're going to start looking at topic number one. And topic number one is an introduction to dynamic biblical preaching. Now, first of all, we need to talk about the need for dynamic, life-changing preaching. You see, there's two things that the church needs. The church needs to have teaching, excellent teaching, but also it needs to have preaching. Very excellent preaching. And you know, I've noticed uh, as I've visited many countries and been in many churches that there tends to be two things that happen in a lot of the churches. The first is, is that uh, people know how to teach or pastors know how to teach, but many of them really don't understand exactly what is preaching and how can I preach well? And how is preaching any different than teaching? Now, that's the first thing that I, I run across and I see. The second thing I find is that uh, many people, when they preach, uh, their, their sermons tend to be either very boring and put people to sleep, or they tend to be full of excitement and loud and yet not having very much content. And neither one of those things is helpful uh, either to the body of the Christ of Christ, or even when you're out preaching in the marketplace or preaching on the corner or, or uh, doing a crusade of some kind. Now, we're looking for uh, something else. We're looking for an understanding of exactly what is preaching, what is teaching, and how do we do especially the preaching well, um, the other thing I've seen is that many times preaching is neither memorable nor life-changing. And when we get up to preach, 
We want it to be something that people get at that time, but also remember it for a long period of time to come. I mean, I don't know how many times we've, I've, I've come out of a church when someone else is preaching, when I've just been visiting, and I'll talk to somebody in my family or somebody who's a friend with us, and I'll say to them, how did you like the preaching in the church today? And a lot of times they'll say something like, oh, it was pretty good. And then I'll ask this question. Do you remember what the pastor preached on? Now, I'm not talking about two or three days later. I'm talking about half hour or an hour later. And do you know the majority of the time, people cannot tell me what the message was that they have just heard. Now, I want to, to challenge you with this idea. That is not being dynamic. That is not memorable. Uh, all that is is average preaching. And average preaching is valuable. Uh, any preaching that has good content is valuable. But we want to go beyond that. We want to do something that impacts lives and which people remember uh, an hour later, a day later, a month later, a year later. That's the kind of thing that we need to do. Um, a second thing that is very important or a main thing that we need to understand, and in your notes this is a, the second point or point B, preaching is not just for the unsaved and for outside the church. We need strong evangelistic messages to reach the lost, yes. But Christians also need to hear anointed sermons regularly that challenge them to live a life that pleases God and to make the difficult changes that they need to to live with good character in a way that God appreciates. We need God's word burned into our hearts by fiery biblical preaching. Now, it's interesting because studies on Christians uh, in many different countries show that often there is very little difference between those who have accepted Christ as their Savior and those who are not Christians in the way that they live. My brothers and my sisters, it shouldn't be this way. But why is it this way? Well, it's this way because life change is difficult. And people need, on a regular basis, both to be challenged to make the change, but also encouraged and shown how that change can be made in their lives. And as a dynamic biblical preacher, you will, not be able, you will not only be encouraging to make them to make the change, but you'll be giving them practical, wisdom-filled wisdom steps that the Holy Spirit has shown you from his word as you have spent time in preparation. See, people don't like change, and they need to be persuaded to change the difficult areas of their life. Um, Non-Christians need to be convinced to be saved, but Christians need to be convinced to tackle and take on the difficult issues that still remain to be changed in their lives. Now, I remember over 30 years ago when I was newly in Bible school, and there was a missionary who came to share uh, visiting from Mexico, an American missionary to Mexico, but he came to speak to us as students. And I remember the message that he shared. I remember the text. I remember his main points. I remember his theme. Everything that he said of significance, I remember it, not because I have a wonderful memory, but because he was a dynamic biblical preacher. By the way, his name was uh, Pastor Danny Ost. His message was taken from the story about the little boy who had bread and fish and gave them to Jesus uh, so that Jesus was able to bless them, break them, and distribute them and feed a whole crowd of thousands. 
And the theme or the main phrase that he used was this, little is enough in the hands of God. And at that time, although I was studying for ministry, I had many doubts as to whether God could even use me because I didn't see myself as having what was necessary to be a good minister. And his message spoke to my heart and was like a fiery arrow of, of life that went inside of me to my heart and pierced my heart in a way that I could remember it and it brought change to me and it brought hope and it brought encouragement and it is a message that still means much to me today. And I believe that this is what God wants for us as preachers is to have fiery, biblical, memorable, dynamic sermons that will bring change to the people in our congregations, that will bring people to salvation, that will be wonderfully memorable even after a decade or two or three. And I want you to know it's possible. If you will uh, follow the principles and practices that we are sharing in this course, you will be able to do this in your church and outside of your church as you minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, I also want you to know as I begin that I am in, I'm indebted uh, to many different books and pastors and people who share about preaching. Uh, I've borrowed principles from many places, and many of those principles I've integrated into my own life and, and ministry over the last 30 years. And so I am greatly appreciative to different people who have uh, been able to to share. For example, uh, I've, I've used uh, quite a few uh, different ideas from the Faith in Action series that comes from the Assemblies of God uh, and uh, is uh, with uh, Dr. McGee. And I've also uh, borrowed things from the pastor of the church where I'm uh, one of the staff at, uh, Pastor Jaime Loya, some of his ideas. And I, I've borrowed from actually about 15 different books on preaching, and then I've studied many people as they preach so that I would have ideas that would change my own preaching and make it better, but so I could share these things with you and make your sharing, your preaching, better and more dynamic. <clears throat> now, I'd like to go now in our notes to the second main point, or Roman numeral, which is Roman numeral number two, and I want to look for uh, just a short time at references to preaching in the Bible, especially the New Testament, especially with Jesus. And if we go to John chapter 7, verse 46, this is how people described Jesus' preaching and teaching. The officers answered, Never has a man spoken the way this man speaks. Wow, that's some pretty incredible praise for the way that Jesus ministered. Also, if we look at Mark chapter 1, verse 22, here's what it says. And they, that's the crowds, were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. And then again in Luke chapter 9, verse 11, listen to the effect of Jesus' preaching. But the crowds learned about it and followed him. He welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed healing. Do you know that his preaching and teaching, Jesus' ministry, attracted thousands and thousands of people, and he would have crowds of five and 10,000 people there to hear the things that he had to say. That is effective, dynamic preaching. Now, if you look in Luke chapter 8, verses 5 to 15, there's a, a very interesting example of one of the messages that Jesus gave. And it's valuable for us to look at it because in that one message, we see many of the ways that dynamic preaching takes place because we see how Jesus organized and prepared and taught a message to the people. So if you go to Luke chapter 8, verses 5 to 15, 
It's a, it is a parable that many of us are familiar with. It's a parable of the wheat and the weeds. And if uh, just by way of memory, there's a, a, f- a seed or wheat that's planted. And uh, Jesus tells how this seed fell on different kinds of soil. And if you look at it carefully, and I'd, I'd like you to do that even as I'm talking, it has one main idea, and that main idea is persevere in the gospel and bear fruit. Persevere and bear fruit. That is the idea of the message. Then it has four supporting points, four points that go back to the main point and explain it or support it or say something about it. Jesus says in, in, the, in different words, but he says, you can receive God's word and allow it to be taken away. You can receive the word, but you can fall away during difficult times. You can allow the word to be killed by worries, riches, and pleasures. Or you can receive the word with a good heart and you can persevere and you can bear much fruit for the kingdom of God. Now notice that this was a message that captured people's attention. It spoke directly to the people's needs and the things that challenged them, and it challenged them to make a change. It also uh, uses a parable, and the thing about parables that's wonderful is that they are stories that we can picture. Uh, it's not abstract, so I can't think, what does that look like? What is, what is that really like? But it's a thing that I can picture. It's something I've probably seen before. And in my mind, when these things are talked about, when, he, when Jesus talks about wheat, when he talks about uh, hard ground and stone, and when he talks about weeds and, and uh, things like this, I can understand and picture those things. And then he puts this in a way that it's easy to understand and easy to remember. Uh, Stories are easy for us to remember and very helpful to use. Now, remember that I said that there is a difference between preaching and teaching. And this is one of the most important things that you can learn in this course because until you distinguish Between these two things, you'll always be mixing them together without knowing it, and you won't learn how to have sermons that are as powerful as what God wants you to have. So in your notes now, you'll see Roman numeral numeral number three, and you'll see seven differences between preaching and teaching. Now, what's the first difference? Well, in preaching you should have one main point. For example, you need to forgive other people. That's one idea. That's one main point. Now, on the other hand, in teaching, you're going to have many different main points because you're covering many different things. Your, your job is not to get across forcefully one idea, but it's to cover a lot of things, to add line upon line and precept upon precept. But on the other hand, in preaching, it's, it's kind of like when I was a, uh, a little kid, um, my parents had a magnifying glass. And one of the things that I really enjoyed doing was using that magnifying glass to start a fire, little fire. Uh, How do you do that? Well, I would get together a little pile of of dry leaves, and then I would take the magnifying glass in my hand, and I would hold it so that the sun went through that lens, and the lens lens focused it down to a very, very fine point, and that fine point was so hot that it could actually burn your hand or set those leaves or something else on fire. And so I would set the the leaves on fire. In the same way, preaching is about focus. 
See, every day we have the same sun and it does the same work everywhere uh, that it's shining. Um, it doesn't start leaves or anything else on fire. But if you want it to do that, it can do it. But there's something that you have to do, and that is that you have to bring a magnifying glass and focus it. And in the same way, we can learn to focus the Word of God in such a way that it brings fire into people's lives and sets their hearts and their lives on fire to make the changes they need to for the gospel of Jesus Christ. So now that's the first change that we want to, or the first difference we want to talk about. Um, in preaching, one main point, maybe it's you need to forgive people, but in teaching, many different points. Maybe you're doing something like understanding the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Now number two, preaching should have a hook in it, something like a, a fish hook, something you want that, that, that gets inside the people so you can draw them somewhere that you want them to go. You want them to know something. You want them to believe something. You want them to do something. Preaching has a goal of change in action or belief in the people that you are preaching to. That's preaching. Now, teaching, on the other hand, it may have hooks, it may not, but if it does, it will have many small little hooks, uh, not just one big one. And its emphasis is not necessarily changing anything, but its emphasis is adding knowledge uh, so people know things. Okay, number three, here's the third thing that's important in the differences, is that preaching should be high energy full of movement, excitement, lots of body movement, lots of voice variation. On the other hand, uh, teaching should be lower energy, you see, because teaching is going to take place many times over a longer period of time. If you preach, you should preach for 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes or somewhere in between. Very few people can do longer than that and do a good job of it because the whole point is to keep people's attention. And if you're bringing life change, if you give people too much, it gets lost like a tree gets lost in the forest. Now, on the other hand, if you're teaching, you may teach for 50 minutes, take a break for five or 10 minutes, go another 50 minutes. You may do that for six different sessions or do that all day. That's a whole different thing in what is expected, in how it's arranged, and what it can accomplish. Now, number five, preaching should usually focus on only one passage or scripture in the Bible. That's the scripture or passage where you're getting your main point or your main theme or your main phrase. Teaching, on the other hand, often comes from many different passages uh, because you're trying to convey knowledge, and knowledge is found in many different places, and you always want to have a lot of good scripture to back up any good biblical teaching that you do. So you may go all over the Bible to bless people with different parts of what's found there. Now, on the other hand, with the preaching you're going to be focused on one scripture or one passage because people remember better if they stay in one place and look at one thing and if you shine the light in that place. Okay, now number six. When you're preaching, you want to tell listeners what to do, what to think, how to respond. You want some kind of change inside of them. That's what's going on with preaching. With teaching, on the other hand, you're trying to add knowledge. Maybe you're teaching uh, about basic Christian beliefs. Maybe you're teaching about the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so many different good things to teach on. But again, when you do that, you're covering many different things with the intent of giving knowledge and understanding. Preaching, yes, we want to give some knowledge and understanding. However, our focus is more on change, on bringing something 
to uh, occur that's different in the life of the person that we are preaching to. And then let one last difference that I'd like to share right now <clears throat> is this. Number seven, preaching burns truth into people's hearts in one strong burst of energy or, or fire. Um, one of the privileges I've had uh, during my lifetime, my wife and I have actually been missionaries now for over 25 years. Uh, we've served in Asia, we've served in Africa, we've served in uh, North and South America, visiting and ministering in all these different countries. But uh, we actually lived for 12 years in Africa. And one of the things that I got to do while I was in Africa was a fair amount of times was go hunting. And I'd actually hunt for the, the meat that we would eat ourselves. And um, one of the things uh, I learned about hunting, in fact, we had people next door to us who had a safari company, and I talked with them because they, they had people coming from around the world to hunt lions and hunt elephants. I, I never needed to do that. Um, but one of the things I learned about hunting is it's very important what kind of gun you use. Now, if you're hunting rabbits and you're hunting small animals, you can use something called a shotgun. Now, a shotgun has many little tiny metal pellets that are shot out of the barrel, and as they go out, they spread out over a large distance. Makes it very easy to hit something, especially if that thing is small. Um, now, on the other hand, though, there's something called a rifle. And a rifle has a bullet that's just one solid piece of lead. And that solid piece of lead it does not break up or spread out or do anything like that. Instead, it powerfully penetrates the skin, the organs, to the heart, and, and kills the animal when you're needing to kill it. Now, if you made the mistake of hunting a lion or an elephant with a shotgun what would happen is, is they'd get hit by all these little pellets. It would not hurt them hardly at all. It would not kill them. It might injure them. And the main thing it would do is it'd get them mad at you. And the next thing you would know, you would not be hunting them. They would be hunting you. Well, I, I don't think people in your congregation are going to be hunting you or mad at you. But, but here's what I'm trying to say. People have tough skins, after they've uh, been sinners for a while, uh, it's tough to reach their heart. And after they've been Christians for a while, but haven't changed some areas, often they be develop calluses on their heart. The Bible talks about how we need the wine of the Holy Spirit to soften our hearts. And so if you're going to see life change in people, you need something that penetrates the skin goes through the muscle, goes through the organs, goes to the heart and stops people from their sin and from the things God doesn't want. It, it brings change. It's powerful. It's dynamic. A, a, a rifle is the right thing to use, not a shotgun. Now, on the other hand, with teaching, you're going to be using a shotgun. It's something that spreads out. It adds truth little by little. Um, it's a lot like the minutes, uh, the minute hand on a clock. Now, if you ever look at a clock and you look at the minute hand and you try to see it move, you really can't see it move because it moves too slowly. And if you look at the hour hand, you certainly won't be able to see that move. Um, in the same way, teaching adds little by little by little. It's hard to see what's happening, but there is something that's happening. And so those are the differences between the two. Now, when we come back to our next session, we're going to look at a very important subject, and that subject is, is it spiritual to prepare a message in advance? I'd like to close with prayer. Father, I just ask right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would minister life to each person who's listening right now, that you would anoint them to preach and to teach your word powerfully. And I pray that they would hear what your spirit is saying through these classes. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you. 
I look forward to being with you in the next session.